Love is not your problem. Love is based on your integrity because that's a decision. So every day I get up to decide I am Tony McPherson's wife and I choose to love him. It's liking him. That's the problem. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Come on in, girlfriends, you wonderful, beautiful, fabulous friends of ours. Did you hear that? I heard all that. That was ginger-like, right? Yes, that was very ginger-like. It feels like she's kind of here. Like she's here? (laughs) As y'all can tell, we're missing our very sweet friend Ginger today. Um, She had a family emergency, so she's not able to be here. So we are praying for her and her family. I know you guys are joining us with that. Um, But... You got me and Jay. Yeah, we're here. We're here. Yeah. And we are going to do our best. We're going to do our best. But yes. we have a really special fe- we friend do. with us today. We do. I'm so excited about this guest because I've known her for a long, long time. I've known her um, for years. Mm-hmm. and um, But our relationship has definitely developed even more and closer over the years. This is my good friend, Love McPherson. She's a licensed, certified family and marriage counselor, <laughs> but she's also like a relationship coach. She's been featured on almost every network, mm-hmm. even the Bravo network on some of the reality shows. And so I am happy to have my friend Love McPherson here. Yay! Yay! <laughs> cheer, 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 right? <laughs> I've, known love, I've known Love for like a month and I love her already. Oh, so. right. And I, I love imagine. you both. And you know what? It is such an honor to be here on this broadcast with you all. You all are just girlfriends and we are going to have a yeah. good time today. We are. We are. And I, here's the thing. I told When I told Ginger and Aaron um, and the team about you, I just raved about how how much I, I love oh, you and and your family, but also how how much you've helped me, and we'll mm-hmm. talk a lot about that mm-hmm. this episode. But then I, I remember when Erin actually talked to you on the phone. She called me. She was like, "Jay, <laughs> <laughs> I love them, <laughs> and I want her to come over to my house. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I want you to move in and just coach me through my life." <laughs> um, if you all don't know, if you all don't know already, we're going to talk about relationships today. <laughs> yes. So love is going to talk us through this. We're going to have some really good practical conversations about how to have healthy relationships, yeah. how to work through past trauma to have healthy relationships, mm-hmm. and um, what does God have for us in our relationships. So yeah, pretty excited about yeah, that today. Super, super excited. And um, so love, I, I know I kind of introduced you, but would you like to tell us a little bit more about what you do, who you, what you've yeah. done? Like, <laughs> tell you know, us about you. you yes. know, I'm going to actually a- answer the question that everybody asked me, is love your real name? And the answer yes. is yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's, love it. it's so <laughs> brand new. <laughs> the love is my real name. My mother um, and dad would always tell me how I got, I received my name. My mother and father were, were uh, married for uh, 60 years. Wow. And she, I was the sixth of eight children, wow, but she would have amazing. very difficult pregnancies and my dad would be always there for her. And so she uh, told him that she put the love in there for him. Aww, and so I said, so I'm cute. his love child. <laughs> 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 and so, yes, that is my name. And I also have an amazing husband hmm. of 38 years yes. that I am in love with. And I actually still like him. And that's the big challenge it's, that's in lot, relationships. And before, <laughs> before you keep going, with, with, like seeing them together oh you met him you know oh, oh you know, know oh, him. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, he, for years yes for years like when I was doing uh touring and like when I put yeah. my music and stuff out they were uh serving at one of the biggest churches in Chicago oh, like so cool. every time I would go to Chicago mm-hmm. and th- like mama love and her, and her husband they would take care of me like I mean yeah. pick me up take me where I need to go uh-huh. get me food they daughter Tiff would take care like they were just their, yeah. their whole and just seeing them together mm. you would think that they had just met because yeah. they are all they just giggly and it, it's so cute <laughs> thank you so much I love it I got so many questions to ask you today how that how you've been able to do that for so long yeah you know it, it, let me tell you it takes work sure. and I don't want to over glamorize it I don't want to make you feel like okay they have 
have the perfect relationship, nothing happens. Because when we do that, we set people up for failure. Sure. Because we are different people. We came with our own set of traumas. We came with our own set of, of, of personality types and any and injuries, inner yeah. wounds and things like that. And so we had to work this thing. Mm -hmm. I said 38 years, but at, you know, at every junction yep. of life, you end up with more challenges. So mm -hmm. I am not my 20 some year old self, yeah. but there are also challenges in your 60 some year old self. Yeah. You understand? So every uh, avenue you have to take the time to say, okay, where are we? But you know what? One of the keys is of course, prayer and God. But the other thing is staying connected and dating mm. because otherwise you wake up one day and you don't know who you're with. Wow. You are sleeping with the enemy yeah. or a stranger. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so you have to continue to learn your person as they continue to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, death in the family and kids getting older. Yeah. It changes you. It evolves you. But if you didn't sign up for that person, because mm -hmm. he signed up for my 20 mm -hmm. some year old yeah. self, yeah. but he has to continue to sign up and I have to continue to sign up all yeah. the time for the person that he becomes and he has to continue to sign up for yeah. the person I become. That's so good. And that applies to all of our relationships, it's not just marriage, but it applies to being parent and child, friendships, family Absolutely. members. Absolutely. Yeah. So before we dive into all that, because that is good stuff, let's go to Joyce and listen to what she has to say to kick this off. So the Bible actually, I think, is a book about relationships. I really believe it's one of the best books that we can ever find about relationships. But it's about three relationships. Number one, our relationship with God. Which if that's not right, nothing else is going to go right. Secondly, it's about our relationship with ourselves. A lot of people don't get along with themselves, so there's no hope of ever getting along with anybody else. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to love anybody else. And then thirdly, it's about our relationship with all these different people out there. So the way this is supposed to work is God loves me. That's the fact of the word. I believe that. And when I believe it, I receive it. So I let that come into my life and into my heart. And that becomes a reality to me. And then only because God loves me, I can begin to love myself. I didn't say be in love with yourself. I'm not talking about a selfish, self-centered love. I'm talking about a respect for yourself, an appreciation of what God has created valuing yourself, being kind to yourself, being patient with yourself. How we treat ourselves ultimately is how we're going to treat other people. Amen. And so then when that's taken care of, when you know God loves you, you've received that, you're loving him back, then you can let that love flow through you to other people. Matter of fact, the Amplified Bible brings it out very clearly, even in the famous 1 Corinthians 13 chapter where the first eight verses talk about what love is and it, it clarifies when it says love it says that is God's love in and through us. I think that's so good and I think what's really interesting and I want to hear you guys share about this um, we often jump to it's the person's fault and when you have to dial it back like Joyce was saying all the way back yeah. to our relationship with God and ourselves so yeah. let's start there because that feels like that's not as intuitive for us, yeah. you know? You know, that is, that is a, uh, what Joy said is, of course, always what she says. It's yeah, so right? profound, yeah. right? And it is so profound because, uh, you, as you said, we start somewhere else. But here's the thing. The Bible says, the greatest commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and love mm -hmm. thy neighbor as you love yourself. So you say, okay, God, I love you. I love you with all my heart, soul, mind. He says, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. How are you going to say you love me, but who you don't see, but you don't can't love your neighbor who you uh -huh. see every day. Oh, okay, God, I love, I love, I love my neighbor. He says, no, 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 love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So Satan mm -hmm. says, oh, the prerequisite is loving yourself. Well, guess what? I have a way to help them not love themselves yeah. because see what he does, he inserts trauma, mm -hmm. sometimes even from the wound and trauma distorts how we see ourselves. It, it, it distorts how we see our neighbor. Yeah. It distorts how we see God and our perspective of the world. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking through a shaded lens of ourselves. So what we see when we look in the mirror of ourselves is I'm not good enough. Yeah. I don't measure up. Mm -hmm. I need somebody to fight for me. And my dad was not there for 
for me. Mm-hmm. I, and so we began to distort from other people's behavior who we are. We, we, we allow other people to give us our identity instead yeah. of owning the identity of made in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. And that's the answer. But Satan will put trauma in our way. And that's where the fight comes because mm-hmm. when it's time for relationships, see, people think about when, you know, we're, we're talking about marriage. Oh, love your husband. Love is not your problem. Love hmm. is based on your integrity because that's a decision. Hmm. So every yeah. day I get up to decide I am Tony McPherson's wife and I choose to love him. It's liking him. That's the problem. Yeah. And no, it is. <laughs> and, and because it, exactly. <laughs> it is liking him. And this is why it's because how we relate to one another hmm. It's yeah. the relationship part. The relationship part says I got my skills from my house. You got your skills from your house. So my parents did it one way. Your parents did it another way. If it was traumatizing in your house and it was dysfunctional in your home, you walk away with those dysfunctional skills and bring it to me and say, here, this is how we're going to handle conflict. We're going to holler. Yeah. This Mm -hmm. is how we're going to handle conflict. We're going to avoid. Yeah. This is how we're going to handle conflict. We're just going to ignore it or 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 uh, spiritually bypass it and act like, oh, just shut up. The you know, the that's the devil. Well, we still have to deal with it, though. You understand? And so what ends up happening? We stop relating to each other in a healthy way because we are mm-hmm. afraid of rejection. We are afraid and hiding shame from trauma. Yeah. And when when Joyce was talking and she was saying our relationship with each other, not just our current relationship with ourselves right now. What is your relationship with that little girl who was molested? Mm. What Mm -hmm. is your relationship with that little girl, that teenager who was promiscuous as a result of being molested? Do you Mm -hmm. love her? Yeah. Can you say, it's okay. You don't have to hide. Yeah. I love you. Can you tell that little girl, it's okay. I understand. That was not your fault. Traumatized people will take other people's bad behavior and blame themselves. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we are dealing with the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. So he will accuse you for other people divorcing you, Mm -hmm. for other people doing you wrong, for other people treating you badly. And we will own the shame and own the blame when actually Jesus paid the price where we don't have to be in this uh, situation. And we bring that into our relationship and we fear them getting too close to see those pockets of shame and blame. We don't want them to see the little girl. We don't want them to see the teen. We don't want them to see the people that we are trying to hide and the people we don't love because we feel like if you see her, you couldn't possibly love her because I don't love her. Yeah, and I realized that... Mm -hmm. um, I was hiding from myself even when I went through and I've shared this with all of our friends. You know, y'all have been on this journey with me um, of when I went through my was first going through my divorce, even deciding if we were going to have a divorce. Like my love was one of them first people. Yeah. Like I've told y'all, I was like, I have a host of counselors, confidants, people and the folks that will tell me when I'm in my mess, when I need to get up, <laughs> when I need to do it. You know, like I, she one of those. She's one oh, of those. You still got to know that. Yes. Now. <laughs> she's one of those people yeah, that I, I was that. talking to on a regular basis yeah. every week, sometimes every multiple week? times mm-hmm. a week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 911. I, I gave up 911 this week. I'm like, yeah, I'm like help, you know. So like I keep, and that's one thing too in learning yourself and knowing yourself you got to get mm-hmm. accountability mm-hmm. in your life like even when it comes to building relationships having people in your life that will tell you when you're not being a good friend yeah. or when you are being a good friend or when you are being a terrible wife or a terrible mom or a good mom mm-hmm. and a, you know you have to have people around you and so that was one of the first things that I did to understand the power of accountability mm-hmm. I didn't always have it but I, I, I understand the power of it but I remember when I was going through you know, first finding out about the infidelity in my marriage, um, I, w- I was talking to love. And one of the first things that she really took me on was that trauma of of mm-hmm. what I dealt with, even with my parents, with sure. my family. You, you had know, to go way back. I had to go way back yeah. because I, instead mm-hmm. of deflecting, because, yeah, we're not excusing what what he did, sure. what my, my what my ex did. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as like re- me rebuilding my self-worth hmm. and even allowing myself to love my neighbor as I love myself, I realized that even in my marriage, I didn't really love myself because I hadn't even really healed sure. from the trauma. So we started with even yeah. like my relationship with my, we spent a lot of time yeah, we did. talking about my, my, my life as a pastor's kid, mm-hmm. the trauma from church, the trauma, like the church hurt, like, yeah. <laughs> like all of that Absolutely. stuff. And then the next phase, you would think that it would be just about like going into like 
romantic relationship talking about that. No, she really, we spent a lot of time talking about me and self love mm-hmm. and learning how yeah. to love me. You I think know? that's so interesting because when you, when we walk through stuff like that, that's hard. I would think I would just tackle this problem right here. Like this, this, there's a route here to this one. Mm-hmm. But like you just, you got to go way back. So like what happened to me back. as a kid that is affecting why I'm lashing out like this as a mom yes. or as a friend? Absolutely. And here's the thing. A lot of times when we, one of the things that we were talking about, like when you were saying, I had to take Jay back and show her how her trauma responses were showing up in her current relationship. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is our brain experiences stress and that stress is related to what kind of resources we feel we have to deal with that stress. Mm -hmm. So it could be a perceived threat or an actual threat. A perceived threat Mm -hmm. might be uh, some monster in the closet. Well, there's no monster in the closet, but you feel it. Your body feels it. But then the actual threat might be somebody shaking your handle and trying to break into your house. Now, uh, the the stress is released some by you having maybe a weapon or something to, to combat it or access to the police. However, our bodies, our brains experience the least amount of stress when we have social resources. And this Mm. is why God put us. It's not good for man to be alone. He needs a social resource, which you're going to connect them and walk them through those, those problems. And so the stress and the anxiety levels of being separated from each other during Mm -hmm. the pandemic, notice Mm -hmm. what happened because our social resources were stripped from us. And so what ended up happening in, in, in those relationships is as she, uh, she began to see, wait, my social resources are, 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 are leaving me. Hmm. The anxiety was higher. Mm-hmm. Now, she had experienced it as a child because she was on a performance-based relationship. Mm-hmm. And she had to perform in order to receive love. Hmm. When she felt the, dis, the dismantling of her marriage how, and, and, and the performance of her yeah. as a wife mm-hmm. was in jeopardy. Everything she knew that she thought she was, she had failed that and she did not have people rise to the occasion yeah. to say, you did good. You get yeah. to get my love. And uh, so she had to deal with to. that. Exactly. Being I was told. accustomed. She, I was accustomed to, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of our friends are yeah, like absolutely. that too. When you're, even as a child, we we're used to getting praised for what we do. Oh, I still call my dad for him to tell me you did a good job. And I am in my thirties and I still want that validation. So yeah, absolutely. It, it, even if it's even from friends, like, you oh, know, absolutely. We I want, want you to that, tell me I'm great. We want uh-huh. that validation. And then with me going through a divorce, um, during the pandemic as well, mm-hmm. I was spiraling. Sure. Like I didn't have any kind of social anything. And then the church didn't step up like I thought that they should have. No one was holding him accountable. But what Love was telling me, she was just like, hey, it's his responsibility to deal with his stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you can't change mm-hmm. him. You can't, you know, you have to worry about yourself. And so that journey of self-love has been the biggest journey and the biggest hurdle that I've like yeah. that, and I I wanted to ask you like why is that like why is it so hard yeah. for us to really like embrace ourselves and love ourselves without feeling prideful or feeling it's so much easier e- to deflect. Mm-hmm. And why blame is that? It. And, and here's the thing about that, um, Jake. One of the things that was happening is if you look at the emotions, and I'm not talking about the experiences because trauma doesn't tell you that it, what's happening here and now. It only tells you shows you the emotions you feel in. Lack of church rescuing me. Hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. you experienced that in your childhood. Yeah. Hmm. Lack of church. Why aren't y'all helping me with, y'all don't even understand what I'm going through to be up here in front. And then when your husband did, y'all not helping me. So the experience of being abandoned by the people that were supposed to love you and never leave you nor forsake you was real for her. Mm -hmm. And then when she saw that um, I gave my best, I did my best, and it didn't, it, my best was not good enough. And then to be, to, for somebody to just say, I'm walking away emotionally from you. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the, what she had learned from her dad, um, do you mind me? No. Oh, from her dad is to um, cling or fight. Yeah. And you can't control people's soul. hmm they have to desire you. Mm-hmm. We have to follow the model of, of Christ where, you know, people are like, I want you to love me and I'm mm-hmm. going to make you love me. No, you won't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and here's mm-hmm. the thing about that. Because Christ said, I don't know if they're going to love me. I don't know if they're going to accept me. 
But I'm going to die on this cross anyway. Yeah. And if they, if they will, they will. If they won't, I'm going to still let the sun shine on the just as well as the unjust. Yeah. And so what we want is we want assurance. So we stop dating. We stop loving. We run because I need your to, to control your soul. That's the part of us. God says, I need your soul to want me. Yeah. I know I can make robots, but I need you to desire me. I need you to choose me. And I'm not going to hold you hostage mm -hmm. if you do not. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I'm still a good God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you choose me or not, yep. I still have been good yep. and I am a good father. <laughs> Whether I have bad kids or not, I am uh, still a good. good father. Yeah. And when you realize I am a good person, mm -hmm. maybe you're not in a place where you are healed well enough to actually see it or experience it, but that's not a reflection of my health. Mm -hmm. That is a reflection of yours. And so sometimes we have to realize that doesn't mean we get a hall pass. Yeah. It just means you can't control where somebody is emotionally yeah. and place it on. Let me just jump higher, leap faster, sing a higher note. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't always work that way. So this is sort of embarrassing to say out loud to you because my child is seven, but recently he was Actually, it's both my kids. My my son is seven. My daughter's five. And so they love their dad. And mom does, mom keeps things running and dad is fun. And so, Girl. right? <laughs> Mine 18. Let me, let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> um, but anyways, so they, they, they want to be with him. And I, I can't remember the situation exactly, but like I got really upset because they, they liked him more and they were very clear in that feeling and they're little so they communicate exactly how they feel um and I remember feeling as if it was an adult that made me feel upset mm -hmm. like wounded by my small children because they picked him over me and I'm not I'm not good enough mm -hmm. and so I'm having these emotions and I thought Erin they are children this is not about them is it and I I could trace back what you're saying this is me like as a kid feeling like I'm not chosen Yes. I'm not picked and someone else is picked over me yes. and it's coming out my kid. Yes. And so I'm seeing this mirror as I'm parenting them and I had to, I had to apologize to my children, but it was so interesting how far back I went. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I, I really love your, your um, transparency on that because we will bring it. And this is the thing. And you will probably not only see it as a child, mm -hmm. you probably, before you got married or whatever, you probably saw it show up in other relationships oh, absolutely. too. Like, absolutely. am I good enough? And oh, yeah. you're trying to like be okay mm -hmm. and somebody ghosting you or mm -hmm. somebody not deciding, no, I'm not going to have a relationship with you. Yeah. It was very personal to you. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening is this. When people... Um, feel that you have the insecurities of I'm not enough where you'll 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 love me, mm -hmm. you really show up in a space where they feel some sense of rejection themselves. Mm -hmm. So you think that they're you when people mm -hmm. fear rejection, they're actually projecting their fears and making the people feel rejected. So oh, your wow. your children probably at times felt rejected by you yep. because you were feeling rejected. So they were thinking mm -hmm. Mom is harder to please or yeah, mom wow, is, this is probably not, you know, she's not going to like this. And mom is, you know, so mm -hmm. they were feeling uncomfortable while you were looking at them. They were looking at you for your eyes of approval. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love, I have, I have the, the, the beauty is grandchildren. So wait on those. And so <laughs> as, but, but, as a grandchild, I make it a habit. When he walks, my little grandson, I have one, and he's three. And when he walks in the room, I make it a habit of making my eyes glow when mm -hmm. he walks into the room. Let your eyes glow for your children when they walk into the room. Don't look at through eyes of criticism. It may be eyes of criticism shaped you, and you're always wanting to make sure you're okay. But instead of doing that, what you want to do is make your eyes glow high. Hey there, no matter what you're doing, stop, start That's practicing it. that because you know what? People gravitate. Mm -hmm. we, what, what even mm -hmm. the Bible tells us how we gravitate in the presence of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And so w literally let them watch them gravitate towards yeah. you as your eyes brighten when they come into the room. Oh, yeah, and, and honestly, and, and I know we got to keep moving, but I just wanted to drop this in because we just had a, do it. We had a conversation mm -hmm. about this with my daughter, who's a lot older than yours. My daughter's 18. And so just know, it, it keep, it, 
Okay. It's not, it's not like I almost <laughs> did it all. A, if they had a favorite, they just got a favorite, okay? Because okay? well, I am not my daughter's favorite because a lot of times, is it possible for... Um, children to see and and because their sh- their minds are still being developed and shaped is it possible for them to assume that rejection is also correction or hmm. is mm-hmm. also like like you said mm-hmm. you're the one that keeps the train moving like mm-hmm. i was always the the one that said do your homework clean your room oh, yeah. brush your teeth you know do yep. your do your chores like good cop good, good cop, cop bad, bad cop, cop. and oh, so absolutely. because we're the bad cop even though yep, we're doing it are. and that's the part that hurts so much is because yes. being the bad cop you're doing things that you know you're you're telling them things that you know will help them in the long mm-hmm. run and help them become better human beings, better mm-hmm. adults, have a more successful life, even like go to school, do that, you know, right. like mm-hmm. the things that I've, mm-hmm. you know, even been talking to my daughter and like, of course, like her dad has always been the fun one. Sure. Her yeah. dad's the one that's like, let's go get <laughs> high yeah, box cool. cookies, you know, let's go, you know, <laughs> let's go to the mall and buy those J's, you know, and I'm like, no, you better wear them shoes I already bought you, you know, like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. could they, is it possible for them to deem that correction as a parent absolutely as rejection you know what yeah. i mean because i know, feel like i still got really the glow point. but i'm yeah. still like glow and go clean See, the kitchen i you know my <laughs> mother i just thought like all this stuff relationship stuff that i talk about i just thought my god you are so out of touch <laughs> and people pay me to say her to speak her wisdom now and so but 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 my but my kids of course they love their father he was tickle monster every saturday right, morning yeah, right, and yeah. run around the house and i was like don't tickle me do not tickle me nope. do not right, tickle me right. and so uh, you know the thing about it is yes they do but guess what mother's love is delayed gr- uh, gratification mm-hmm. very often uh. why because your children will grow up and they will experience life. Mm-hmm. Life is full of lessons yes. and hard knocks yes. and they will overcome. And all of a sudden, your words, your words and your wisdom, your discipline, they will say, oh, mom said, and mm-hmm. they will begin to respect you more. I, my daughter who is has the son, all of a sudden, <laughs> mama rocks now. <laughs> And I just love watching. I was like, mm, I wonder who he got that from. Uh, right, right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm I waited for this that. day to for her to experience herself, right? Yeah, I waited yeah. for this. There. But I love that how you said a mother's love is delayed gratification. It is. Yeah, that's it really is. good. I really love that. Yeah. Let's make sure to remind each other of that, okay? Yes, yes. We okay. Will. <laughs> okay it's let's, gonna come though. I'm gonna write it down and date the day that you told me that. <laughs> I'll call you in a year. Uh-huh. Um, let's jump now to relationships with other people. So we tackled this part. So let's see what Joyce has to say about relationships Mm, with others and talk some more about that. 1 Peter 3, 11, the second half of the verse, says, Do not merely desire peaceful relations with God, with your fellow man, and with yourself, but pursue and go after them. So I just want to take just a moment here to say to you, make sure that you're at peace with God. That you're not doing things that war against your conscience. That there's not hidden sin in your life that needs to be dealt with and forgiven. Think a little bit about your relationship with yourself. Do you like yourself? Do you love yourself? Are you your own worst enemy? Are you your own worst critic? And then secondly, how do you navigate and handle relationships with other people? You know, the... Avoiding people is not having good relationships with them. <laughs> I mean, we can get pretty good at just, well, I know what I'll do. I'll just, it's just me. I don't need anybody else. I'm not going to mess with anybody else who needs people. Like one person said, if I don't know you, I don't need to know you. Well, that's not the way God wants us to be. Amen. So just a few guidelines for good relationships. Number one, let people be themselves. Stop trying to change them and love them as they are, not the way you wish they would be. Okay? I love that statement. Let's learn to value people the way they are, not the way we would like them to be. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 22. Paul said, For although I'm free in every way from anyone's control, I've made myself a bondservant to everyone so that I might gain the more for Christ. So he's like, look, I'm free. I can do whatever I want to, but I've decided that I'm going to do everything I can 
to serve you and to get along with you. And I'm not going to do it because it's easy. I'm going to do it because that's a way of serving Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so as you talk about pursuing peaceful relationships, let's note the thunderstorm that's happening outside of the window here. If you hear large booms, it's not our souls crushing because our relationships. <laughs> I, 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 said, I said, God just want to be a part of this conversation. Yeah, yeah. He said, like, wait a minute, let me interject. Yeah, he knows we need him in this space. So have no fear. Everything and, and, and is all right. Guess what? Just like Joy said, we're not going to change him. We're not going to change him. We're not going to try to change him. We're going to let God be God. Yes, come, on come on in. Come on in. We're not too close though. Yeah, we're going to keep that right out there. Okay, so on that note, let's talk about peaceful relationships in a world that feels like toxic relationships are the norm Mm -hmm. and like what what you see every day and the work that you do and how do we even navigate that you know i what i see is too often one of the things that that joyce talked about i see too often and that is that we don't accept people for who they are yeah we want especially in romantic relationships we actually write a script Mm -hmm. for our spouse and expect them to live up to it. I remember years ago, my first year of marriage, and I've been married 38 years, and, and I used to watch soap operas back then, okay? Oh, yeah. So, so I was <laughs> watching soaps. all my children, and I thought, okay, let me reenact this script. And and I had this romantic dinner for my husband <laughs> when he got off work, and and, and I had I, I met him at the door with a negligee, and on the, the, the it had happened, that scene had happened in that show. And, the, and when, uh, I think Dr. Cliff or whatever <laughs> he came, and he was just like, oh, you are the this. And he was telling all of this stuff that, that she was because she was so romantic. So I did this and my husband walked in the door <laughs> and he was like, uh, uh, what is this? What is this? <laughs> I, said, I said, I did this, honey, because I love you. Uh, I love you, too. Wow. OK. Wait. You don't have like love. I love you from the ground to the floor to the ceiling. You are the world. He didn't do the script. Right. Oh, he, I was so upset that he didn't follow the script. Yep. He hadn't received it, mm-hmm. but he hadn't. But he didn't follow it. He should have known it. Yeah, he should have right? known, known it. He married me, yeah. right? And I gave up soap operas because Hmm. it has unreasonable expectations and as women we have to realize that there are things that give us unreasonable expectations Uh of people and those chick flicks and soap operas and those are scripted and they're like oh wait take two and they have their lines and they're feeding their lines we can't feed uh, other people their lines and just make them uh, abide by them what we have to do is realize they are going through their own personal dramas They are going through their own uh, salvation with God. And you know what? We have to look at the model of Christ. And this is if he had told me back when I first started in this salvation thing, which is years for for me, because I was Mm -hmm. my parents were all Christians and stuff like that. But if he had told me all the stuff I was going to have to work with on work on on myself, I would have walked right out this. Sorry. Thank you. But I think I'm going to go a different direction. Sure. But he, you know, God is so gracious and, and, and he will allow us one thing at a time. You'll see everything lining up. Let's work on your, your, your character here. Let's mm-hmm. work on that. Let's work on that. And he'll give us time to, to come to him and, and grow and, and all this kind of stuff. But a lot of times we want our spouses, we want our children to change now. I mm-hmm. want it now yeah. and do it now. And don't you ever go back. If you ever, if you, even if you're sincere about changing and you go back and you mess up, see, you were not sincere. We have to give yeah. people grace. We want to have relationships with the role hmm. instead of the person, Ooh, R-O-L-E. Yeah. Uh-huh. We have, because when, when we have a role, expectations are attached to the role. Yep. If you say, I'm here with a relationship expert, the role expert, relationship expert is going to say, oh, well, then we expect some really good relationship sure. advice from her. But what about having a relationship with love? You understand? Mm -hmm. With me. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we want to have a relationship with mom, but mom was broken. Mom is not there. Mom is on drugs. Mom is busy. Mom is depressed. Whatever the case. And so we are longing for a a relationship with the role when in actuality, if our mom's name is Susan, Susan is trying to heal. Yeah. This is who you have to say. Susan was a little girl. Susan went through this thing. What can I do to love Susan? Now, let me tell you, you bring little Susan, teenage Susan, 
adult Susan up in the church, you would love on her. Mm -hmm. You would take care of her. Mm -hmm. You would have grace with her. But Susan, the mom, yeah. you don't have patience with her. Yeah. You're only yeah. resentful and angry because Susan didn't have the perfect childhood to be the perfect mother, father, whatever the case may be. Yeah. We have to stop having relationships with a role and have a relationship with people. Yeah. My husband and I were in counseling last year and... Um, I did treat him very much like a role. Like I assumed you got the job description when we got married, that this is what a husband does. And so in counseling and just hearing some things that he experienced, I had a real, like I remember specifically a shift that I had where I realized, oh my gosh, you have hurt. And if anybody else told me what you just told me, I would feel nothing but empathy yes. towards you. Yes. And why have I met you with such hate? Yes. Only because of the role that you've been assigned. If yes. you were anybody else in my life, I would have treated you totally different in this situation yeah. and had more grace for you. And that's crazy. Like that's that's how I ended up finally getting to a place where I could forgive my dad. Yeah. Like with the all the trauma, part of it. the empathy part of mm -hmm. it, and like honestly, I literally started ha like because I was praying. Like I'm like God, I don't want to have this yeah. anger with my father. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wanted our relationship to be mended and mm -hmm. you know and so I started having dreams and like seeing him as a kid mm -hmm. seeing him in Missouri being like segregated like not being able to drink mm -hmm. from certain fountains or mm -hmm. not being able to as a teenager him having to you know to do the things he had to do to help his family and help his mom and and I'm like wow like he's had a lot of trauma and so I remember waking up one morning just weeping like man like and I just felt so yes. much hurt for my father yeah. who I was very very upset with because he had done mm -hmm. a lot of you know we didn't have a great relationship you know especially in my sure. like 20s like it was really really bad but I started wake, waking up and started empathizing with who he was yes. mm -hmm. in his trauma and that's I was like I forgive I forgive him like yeah. I forgave yes. him for that and I, that's yeah. when you have to say I will have empathy mm -hmm. and forgiveness for people who don't even realize they need it mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he may not even be in a position because of his brokenness, because of his traumas. Yeah. He may not even be in a position of reali realizing I need her to show empathy and grace to me. Instead, he is still showing. I'm not saying your father, yeah. but a person is showing the same type of relationship, like angry or judgmental or something that is demeaning to you. Yeah. But you still have to to say, hey, I need to see the role. Mm -hmm. I mean, the person, not, not the, the role, role. Yeah. because the role is is all about me. Uh -huh. It's all about mm -hmm. feeding into what I want, what I need. So their behavior becomes you become resentful because they're not giving you what you feel you signed up, like you said, to give to me. Mm. It's all oh, selfish. So what you said, I think, is so good because God met you where you were. Like, yeah. he gave you that dream. Yeah. So he hasn't left us in these relationships Absolutely. to figure them out. If we have to be empathetic for someone else's trauma, he will give us what we need. But he to gave her father what he needed as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He gave him a daughter mm. that loved him in spite of himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he was doing the best he could mm -hmm. preaching and doing in the midst of his trauma, in the midst of his brokenness. He was still trying to promote God. Yeah. God still saw his heart yeah. and his need. He always wanted to cling to his daughter, sure. but he didn't know he how didn't know to how. do it. Uh -huh. he and therefore how. he used an abusive way to, to, to keep her close when in actuality God gave her back to him yeah. through love and not through control. Yeah. And it's, and it's our relationship is so great. Once yeah. I made the decision and I actually saw who he was through his trauma, like it's it's so good right now. And that's yeah. amazing because two years ago when we first started doing this, it was not. That. It was not. And it you just, all were barely talking. We were barely when we first started the podcast. Me and my dad were barely, and that was even before I found out about my ex. Yeah. Like you know, like that was before. Well, that's when our marriage I thought was great. You know, it wouldn't, but I, I thought it was. But. <laughs> But it's so kind of God to allow me to go through that healing process yeah. with my family mm -hmm. right before all of this, you know, came out. You know, and I have to, to well, interject. Have something to say. Uh -huh. She put her I, finger I, up. I have to what is it? Because what, when, that is what the key to what how I counsel. And mm -hmm. this is why. I realize that we have to go back and heal those core relationships. Mm. Once we remember, I talked about skills, yeah. relationship have, relating to people is skills. One of the main skills you'll need is forgiveness. You have to go back and learn to forgive 
empathize, give grace to those core relationships that failed us. And then you walk out the door of your home to forgive the, the other relationships. Yeah. But until you go back and do that thing with that core, you cannot, you will not forgive you. You will not forgive others. You will, you will just have a spirit of unforgiveness. Uh-huh. So go back, learn how to empathize with the person who hurt you, the relationships that hurt you the most, learn those skills and then go and use that skill, the mastery of forgiveness, the mastery of, 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 of empathy and, and that, that the Holy Spirit will direct you and give you. And you take that and you place it on your ex, you place it on your present, you place it on your children, you place it on your boss. You just place it all the other uh, directions. I love that. I think that is so powerful. And I, I, I think that that'll help a lot of people, too. you know, like that are even struggling. I think about work. You know, you said mm-hmm. the bosses that are having conflicts at work, mm-hmm. having conflicts. Role. The, that's yeah, a role. That's a role. Powerful. And you know what you do? You sow seeds. You yeah. know why? Yeah. Because when we look at ourselves, how many roles are we playing? Yeah. Mm. We are roles yeah, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And we need yeah. that same empathy. We need that same grace upon our lives. We mm-hmm. operate as people, but people experience us in our roles. Yeah. And they have expectations of us in our roles. Yeah. And so we need the same empathy, grace, forgiveness, yeah. all of those things in order to um, so sow it. Sow yeah. it to oh, somebody that's, else. That's good love. Okay, well, <laughs> let's go back to Joyce and hear a little bit more about how to um, deal with people in our relationships and how we can do better. And then I have a question for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to the weak, I become weak, that I might win the weak. I have in short, and this is really, I love this verse. In short, I have become all things to all people that I might win them to Christ. So you know what Paul is saying? Everywhere I go, I've already set my mind that I'm going to adjust and adapt to you. Now that doesn't mean if somebody's in sin, you're going to jump in sin with them so you can be like them. That's, that's not at all what that means. But it does mean that we're going to adapt and adjust. You know, for example, I am uh, I'm a bottom line person. Just... Tell me what you're trying to say. Do it in as few words as you can. And let's get on because I've got a lot of things to do. Dave, however, is very detailed. And so it takes Dave a lot longer to tell a story than it takes me to tell it. And so in my way of listening, I feel like that he's giving me a bunch of details that I I don't care about. And I assume because I don't care about it, nobody else does either. (laughs) Because we all think that everybody's like us. So... If I'm not really careful, and I do have to be careful, and I don't always succeed, when he's telling me something, I can get really impatient, and it will show on my face and be in my attitude and come out of my mouth. Okay, so one of the ways that we can get along with people better is learning to know them, knowing ourselves, and then maybe just saying, now, I know when I have lunch with that person, that I'm going to probably need to listen to things that I don't care that much about. But see, listening is one of the ways that we can show love for people. That's very difficult to do. <laughs> I'd just like to say that up front. She makes it sound really easy, like you just listen to them. But sometimes that is exhausting. That is hard. And especially when you're annoyed or frustrated. So how do you do that, love? <laughs> it is absolutely self-discipline. It really is. Oh. I, re- I remember my Let's mother. Let's a different word. <laughs> when, when she's talking, I, I, it, a scene goes towards my mother. And, and my dad was a big talker. And he was in politics for 36 years. He um, was an elected official and stuff. And my mother was a lot of wisdom. So people would, like me, she was the one who was out there speaking and doing things sure. like that. But when it came to my dad, he would be talking and talking, and I would just see my mother sitting and listening. And they went to breakfast every day, and they were married six years, and I would just see her just listening. And then they would start taking walks, but then they would sit at the bus stop. Hmm. And now I'm already married at that point, right, because they're older. And they would just sit at the bus stop, and, and I remember driving past and seeing my parents sitting at a bus stop. And... I looked and my mother was just listening and daddy was just talking, talking. And I thought, I don't even have that skill. What happened to me? Where I am like Joyce, where my husband will be talking. I have to say, love, sis, and listen, because he will take you down the rail road and then up again. And and so now when we go to breakfast, 
I, I sit and I sit on purpose. I will tell myself, I, I really do. And I find myself reminding me of my mother because I'll sit and say, what he's about to talk to you, you mm. could care less about. Mm -hmm. But you're going to pretend you do. And you're <laughs> going to and you're gonna sit right there and, and nod and give him all the body language he needs yeah. to believe that you're interested in this. And then I, after a while, I start asking questions. And then I am actually interested because I am interested in him, mm -hmm. not what maybe what he's saying, but I'm interested in him loving me and being a part of his world. Yeah. Him, he's so into my world, hmm. but, but I'm not always as engaged. So I have to make sure that I am disciplined yeah. to be in part of his world. Um, and he's into youth, right? He's into youth ministry and all this kind of stuff like that. And I've done that for many years. And I'm like, okay, I don't really want to hear about the youth. <laughs> I ain't worried about the kids. Like, yeah, I ain't worried about the kids. <laughs> so, they wore me out. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I listen. Yeah, yeah. It's so much about it is selflessness. It, it is. is. Selflessness. And then I, I, like, mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to, to do, like now, it wasn't always, but is learning people's love languages. Mm -hmm. Is because I realized that so much of my love life and so much of my relationship because my marriage lasted you know for a young person I I have to I can't discredit the fact that we almost made it to 20 years we that's were at 19 time. that's a long time right you know <laughs> so Satan will want to make me feel like girl that was nothing you know no we had like mm -hmm. Satan came in at the last part and, and tricked my, my my ex at the time but we had a we had a good run while we while we were at it but um one of the things I do know that I wish we could have done better is learning each other's love language mm -hmm. and loving each other through the love language. So now yeah. I imply I'm implement that more so even in my friendships, mm -hmm. my relationships with anybody is not because he, I would realize later that he was loving me the way he received yeah. love. Yeah. Yep. So if Absolutely. I'm if he's a gift person and I'm and I'm an acts of service person mm -hmm. and he's constantly buying me stuff, I'm like that is not what I need, you know, yeah. but he's so excited because he's like, oh, I've bought you this and I bought you that. And I'd be like, rah, 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 you it's know, a, and it would mm -hmm. deflate him. Sure. But it was also him not listening yeah. to what I needed. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a big part of it. Figuring out the other person, whether it be a romantic relationship or a friendship, learning yeah. what makes that person feel loved. Yeah. And yes. if it's words of affirmation. And mine is maybe, you know, like I said, acts of service, mm -hmm. not do like picking your cup up for you won't make you feel love. But me saying, no. hey, you're doing a really good job, Aaron. I love how practical that is because it, it doesn't just happen. We have to work at all relationships we have. They don't they are not just handed to us. And then they're good. We have to invest that time into them. I think that's so good. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I have a challenge issue to all of us. I'm going to tell us some questions we should start asking in our relationships. Ask them of yourself too. This is not just for us to do. You have relationships too. So listen to these questions. How am I showing up? Mm -hmm. mm. How can I communicate better with my closest relations? How do we serve and listen to those we're in relationship with even when we are so very frustrated? Mm. And this one is very, very difficult. How do we help or serve and serve without being walked all over? But also how do you serve them when you're getting nothing back? Mm. You know, yeah. I feel like sometimes we serve. I know I do this a lot um, in my relationship. I have to purposely think I'm going to serve him, not because I'm going to get something back from him. I'm going to serve him because that is what God has called me to do. And that is, that's something I can do. Yeah. And the rest is not on me. Yeah. So I think those are some good questions for us mm -hmm. to ask ourselves. So yeah. love, do you have any final thoughts of words of wisdom for us to walk away with today? Yes, I do. Oh, I, good. Thank uh, you. I'll write it down. <laughs> and, and I love the, 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 the questions that you're asking and the serving is very important. This is what I will say. Uh, and I say this, and this is always my ending. Always choose love mm -hmm. because really love never fails. We may fail each other. We may fail ourselves and people may fail us. Yeah. But really the act of loving, you can't lose when you love. You can't so at lose if you receive God's love. You can't lose if you give people love who don't deserve it. You can't lose when you love yourself. Yeah. Love just never fails. Why? And this is the thing. Satan will come to talk you out of love. He will bring everything in you mm -hmm. to talk you out of love. Yeah, he will. Never give up on love. Why? Because God is love. Yeah, That's so good. So good. Read First Corinthians 13 if you haven't. And once you get into that scripture, um, 
you will not be able to run from it. And you'll see in every relationship you have how you can do better and where you can grow close to God and how he can help you be kind and patient and not rude. Um, all those really important attributes. Yeah. So anyways, we're so glad you guys joined us. We have a very special offer for you today all about relationships because we all need some help. Um, Joyce has a resource for us. It's a free digital download called Enjoying Successful Relationships. I have read it. It is excellent. It is excellent. Yes. yes. It is really good. So get it. It's free. Um, just head to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. You can find that there. You can catch up on past episodes or you can head to YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the yeah. podcast, write a review, tell your friends about it. Um, but we just love you guys so much and we need each other. Yeah. We need each other to walk through these things in life. So we're glad you're here today. Hope you have a wonderful day. Love you guys. Praying for you. Bye-bye. Love you, love. Love you, love. Love you, love. <laughs> JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.